Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to start a new series of videos called Tea Talk and Book Banter. So I'm just going to tell you what tea I'm drinking because it's essential to the reading of the books. <laughs> I feel like I'm always either drinking coffee or tea when I'm like relaxing and reading. So I thought it'd be fun to share with you what I'm drinking and what I'm reading. And today we're going to go over my Jane Austen July reading challenge as well as a book that I read Where'd You Go Bernadette for our local book club and then I included some additional books that I bought on vacation and they were relevant to where I was so I read them there. So I did a lot of reading in the month of July and I'm sorry that it took so long for me to get this video out. We literally just got back from our Puerto Rico trip and I'm trying to collect my thoughts and remember everything that I read <laughs> and my thoughts on the books that I read so that I could share it with you. Okay so pour yourself some tea and let's get started. Okay, so first let me let you know what I am drinking this morning. And I have this, it is David's Organics White Peach Tea. It's like an herbal tea. And that's what I'm drinking now. Earlier today, I had this English breakfast tea, and actually, this is by a company called Ahmad Tea in London, and the description on this little card that I received from my um, Buy Sips subscription box says that it is the tea that they drink in Buckingham Palace, so that's pretty cool. I'm drinking the tea that maybe Princess Diana was at one time drinking, right? I thought that was really neat, and um, this Sips Buy, this is my August teas. It's really cool because they give you like this little sheet that gives you a description of all of the teas that they send you and it tells you like how long to seep it for, where it's from, a description of the tea itself. It's just been really cool and fun which is why it prompted me to want to share with you my tea and my books. So anyway just thought I would give you a little information on that. The company is Sips By. I am not sponsored by them but they did send me a box and I am hooked and I am now <laughs> getting a monthly subscription box where they put together a bunch of different teas for you. Um, again, you fill out like the whole thing telling them what you like, what you don't like, all that stuff, and they send you a variety of tea. So thought it was fun, wanted to share. Let me tell you about the books that I'm reading, or I should say the books that I have already read in July. And we'll start with Emma. <laughs> this book was it was really hard for me to initially get involved. I kind of felt like Emma was really a snob and she was controlling and I initially did not like her character. But in the end, it was a really great love story and I started to like Emma. Although she was a very controlling person, she was also a romantic and she was trying to get couples together. She was trying to be like a matchmaker, but she herself was scared of change and decided she was never going to marry and she had no interest in anyone. And um, I don't wanna like spoil anything, but things change and you know, the characters that she's trying to like finagle all of these relationships between her friends and not thinking of herself, um, but then at some point she is involved. <laughs> so that's all I'll say. It was a really fun book. I ended up reading most of it, like I just had a little bit left at the end and I decided to try the Audible because I was traveling so much, I thought it would be easier to be able to listen to the Audible in my travels and the audible that I got was amazing and it brought the characters to life and especially with Jane Austen books I feel like there's so many characters and it gets really confusing at times and having each character kind of have their own voice in the audible was helpful in just bringing the story to life and putting things together and I really really am so happy that I not only read the book but I also listened to the audible so that was great and I highly recommend if you are reading Jane Austen books and you're finding them to be challenging, try to do a combination of the book and the Audible because it will be very helpful. The other Jane Austen book that I read was, was Lady Susan and I read this on our flight to and from Puerto Rico 
and I listened to the Audible and I fell asleep listening to the Audible. So I had to like go back and listen to it again. Um, this was a really interesting book. I really, and again, another character, I didn't care for Lady Susan. I thought she was kind of horrible. Um, she is widowed and she is a bit of a flirt and she's trying to remarry and she's also trying to get her daughter to marry somebody that her daughter has absolutely no interest in. She seems like a pretty horrible mother as well. She sends her daughter, you know, off to some type of like a boarding school or something. They, they really don't seem to have an intimate relationship and Lady Susan is just traveling from place to place and coming into people's lives and kind of being very disruptive in their lives as well. And this is written in a series of letters, which I found hard to follow at the beginning, which again was a great reason to not only read the story, but listen to the Audible as well, because you have the different voices coming through. So that was really an interesting way to experience this book. But I did very much enjoy it. And I do feel like all of the characters in Jane Austen's books really come to life. They they are just so real to me. The characters, I can like relate to them and I feel like they are part of my life. Like I feel like I really know them by the end of the book, so much so that it's kind of sad when it comes to an end. So I really did enjoy both of those books and I also watched the movie Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow. And that was great too. I mean, I liked it so much that I watched it twice while we were on vacation. I just love, first of all, I love the time period and the atmosphere in the movie. And Gwyneth Paltrow made a really great Emma. She portrayed her just as I thought she would be. So I really very much enjoyed watching that movie for Jane Austen July. And that will bring me into another book that I only listened to the Audible for this one. And that was Bridget Jones's Diary. I watched the movie a while back and I really enjoyed the Audible so much more than the movie. It reads obviously like a diary and she brings you through her day to day and it's kind of a um, spinoff from Pride and Prejudice. So it's kind of like a modern day Pride and Prejudice. And the man who plays what would be Mr. Darcy is just really funny and really very much like Mr. Darcy. I really saw like um, a great comparison of the two and Bridget Jones is just hysterical. I was laughing out loud in my car listening to this Audible. I really was sad when this like book Audible came to an end. I wanted to hear more of her life because it was so interesting even though it was kind of like the everyday mundane stuff. Um, her experiences were pretty comical and really, really fun to listen to. Another book that I attempted to read but didn't quite get through was What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew. This was also part of the challenge. And this is a great reference book if you are reading just like old world English literature set back in like the 17th or 18th century or 19th century, just like set way back in time. There's so many terms that I'm not familiar with and they are all in this book. So I read like, I don't know, a quarter of it through, but it's just very informational. It's, there's no storyline really to it. And I haven't read enough older books for it to be that relatable to me yet. Although I do plan on reading a lot more like Charles Dickens stories and I need to get through all of Jane's Austen. Jane Austen's books as well. Um, there's just so many authors that I have not yet read. So probably when I do a little bit more reading, this will be even more helpful to me. But one thing that I noticed right at the beginning of the book was they talked about like different weights and pounds and things like that and how like what their scale was for weighing things and um, talking about like the, all the different terms for money and stuff like that. And in Bridget Jones's diary, she, she begins every day with her weight and she was saying like um, whatever, eight stone and whatever pounds. And I'm like, what does stone mean? And it was driving me crazy throughout the entire book. I'm like, what is eight stone? And stone means 14 pounds, apparently, to the British. So I totally didn't know that. and. 
that was helpful even in a more modern day book that I was reading. So this is interesting and I will eventually get through it. I read so much in July, I just kind of ran out of time, but I am definitely going to reference this book often as I am reading some older books and um, I will, like I said, eventually get through it. A book that I very much enjoyed reading on the beach and I looked so ridiculous reading Frankenstein <laughs> at the beach at the Jersey Shore. People probably thought I was a little crazy, but it was part of the challenge and it was a book that I had never read and I really, really enjoyed this book very much. Um, Dr. Frankenstein is a scientist who loves to experiment until one of his experiments goes wrong and I feel like he doesn't have very much courage. Like he is such a baby and <laughs> he runs away from what he has done and he spends much of his life trying to run away from a mistake that he made rather than confronting it and dealing with it and trying to make it better. I feel like he's constantly on the run and in doing so, um, lots of bad things are happening. So it's kind of just escalating the problem and making it worse. And I don't want to give away any spoilers, although probably most of you are very familiar with the story of Frankenstein. Although I felt like it was a lot different than the movie, from what I remember anyway, um, the book was not as dramatic as the movie and it just portrayed Frankenstein, the monster himself, in a much different way and you actually feel bad for him and you can understand why he's doing the things that he's doing and when he does bad things, you have a complete understanding of why. So I did like that part of the book and if I were Dr. Frankenstein, I probably would have given in to the monster's request. So if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I would have given in to that because I think that it would have not only saved a lot of lives, but it might have made something bad into something more bearable. And um, I don't know, that's just my thought on it. And I did not like the end of this story. I am a big like fairy tales with happy endings type of a person. When a book ends like not in a happy way, it just, it weighs on me and I feel bad and I don't like that. I like to read to feel good, same thing. I know I've mentioned to you guys before, like the movies that I watch and the audibles that I listen to and the YouTube videos that I watch, I need them to make me feel good vibes, not bad. <laughs> so I didn't walk away from this story feeling happy. So that was my only complaint about it, but I really did enjoy it. And I just, I love this book cover too. It's just like one of my favorites. So I'm glad that I got through Frankenstein at the beach at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> I need to take a break. I'm like losing my voice because I've been talking so much. And then the book that we read with the book club was Where'd You Go, Bernadette? It was a fun book to read and I was surprised that pretty much everyone in the book club hated it. <laughs> like nobody liked it. They all had bad things to say about it. I very much enjoyed Bernadette Fox. So she moves to Seattle with her family and she is not a Seattle type of girl. A lot of the families there are very close knit. They have history together. They like all grew up together. So she's coming into this small town with her daughter and at the time of the story, her daughter is a teenager. She's about 15 years old and she tells her daughter that if she gets a really good report, report card she'll bring her to Antarctica and that was a ridiculous request for Bernadette to make because she's an introvert and she doesn't like to deal with people or confronting people and she kind of keeps to herself and she really shies away from society, especially the society in Seattle. Her husband is a Microsoft guru, so he is like always working, always in the office. She is a stay-at-home mom, but her daughter is pretty independent, and the story is she ends up fleeing and the daughter is trying to track her down and see what happened to her through a series of emails and letters and um, invoices and bills that come in the mail and all of these different notes and things that she finds helps her daughter B to put the whole story together and to learn so much about her mom that she never knew. And it was just a fun read. Like this was just really a fun book to read on the beach, on vacation, very chill. Uh, Bernadette had me laughing so many times and I just, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good read and it's going to be a movie. And I think the movie will be even better than the book because it is very atmospheric. Like the atmosphere 
in the book and the places like the the family lives in this really old, like it was a boarding school and it was abandoned. So it's like, it's not set up like a house and it's really old and falling apart. And I love stuff like that, like quirky old houses. So I think that is going to be really cool to see in a movie. Okay, I only have two more books to talk about. <laughs> so I read um, The Pearl by John Steinbeck and I hated this book. I hated it so much. I'm sorry if any, if any of you actually enjoyed this book and I know there's like a theme to it and a lesson to be learned and all of that stuff, but it was nothing but horrible sadness, misery, death, um, all bad stuff, not good vibes at all. If you're looking to have like a happy book that's gonna put you in a good mood, like that's why I think I love Jane Austen books because they all do have fairy tale endings, at least thus far, the books that I've read, they are kind of like Disney to me, like the Disney stories that I love so much, they do have happy endings and I walk away a happy girl. I did not walk away happy from this book. So this guy finds a pearl in the ocean and the pearl makes him instantaneously very wealthy and he lives in a very, very poor village. His son is sick, so the value of this pearl is going to help him to make his son better. And then the pearl just brings nothing but evil and bad stuff to him. And everybody wants it no matter what the cost. So he is basically trying to flee from his neighborhood and flee from the world and everyone because everybody just wants to get this pearl. And that's basically the gist of the story. It goes on and on and he's hiding and running and people are trying to kill him and he's trying to ward off people and the ending is horrible. So that's all I have to say about this book. Don't read it. <laughs> I know this is a really famous book and like a lot of people probably enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below uh, if you ever read it and what you think about it. I know it has a very deep meaning and a moral and all of this stuff, but I just don't like it. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, when I was on my Gettysburg trip, if you guys watched my Gettysburg vlog, I went to, it was called the Shriver House, and there was a girl named Tilly Pierce who lived next door. The house was like side by side, and the Shrivers took her with them to their grandfather's or father's farmhouse on the other side of town in Gettysburg during the time of the war when it was like at its absolute worst and essentially what they ended up doing was by moving to the farmhouse for safety they actually put themselves right in the center of the battlefield like where everything was going on so Tilly was only 15 years old and she had to be in this farmhouse in the middle of the Civil War it was crazy so the Battle of Gettysburg there were so many soldiers that were killed if you guys know anything about the Civil War and the history of it Gettysburg is really, really um, a very interesting place to visit, but it's also very sad because so many lives were lost there. And Tilly lived through it and she documented it and she wrote her story like this is like real life from a 15 year old girl who lived through the Civil War. So it was really interesting to me because I was at the Shriver house, I was at her house, I got to walk through where she actually was and it was just exciting for me to read her story about her interaction with the soldiers. The farmhouse she was staying in became a hospital for the soldiers. So she was literally like dragging bodies into this house and helping people do amputations and all of this horrifying stuff. But at the same time, she was um, becoming friendly with the soldiers and talking to them and learning more about them. And after the war, she actually had soldiers come to her house to thank her for, you know, helping them through such a, a horrible time. So it was really a great read. So. If you go to Gettysburg someday, I would highly recommend visiting the Shriver House and absolutely buying this book to hear Tilly's story about um, her experience actually living through the worst, most horrifying part of the Civil War. Okay, well, thank you if you made it this long. That is all of the books that I read for the month of July. I'm going to quickly share with you the books that I plan to read in August. I'm gonna try to scale back a little bit because I feel like I'm going through these books so quickly I'm not really absorbing them as much as I would like to and kind of like savoring and enjoying the story. So I'm going to quickly show you the books that I plan on reading and I'm not going to talk 
very much about them. When I do my reading wrap up um, of August in September, I'll talk more about it because one, I'm losing my voice, two, probably nobody's listening to me anymore. If you are, give this a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you made it this long. And three, I don't know very much about the books that I'm reading. Like at one point in time, I thought they would be interesting enough. So I bought them. I bought so many books. So I'm trying to get through the ones that I already have. Okay, here we go. Our book club read this month is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ning. And I have seen a lot of book reviews on this on booktube, so I thought it would be an interesting read. Um, it's about life in a small town where everything I think is seemingly perfect. And it talks a little bit about race and families. And apparently this one family moves into this town and all the things that happen. So <laughs> something like that. Like I said, I don't want to go on too much. And then I just saw on Instagram yesterday, it is Agatha August. So it was Jane Austen July and now it's Agatha August. I had no interest really in reading this book really right now, but it's by Agatha Christie and I literally bought it for my son yesterday because they have to read it for school. And then when I saw that on Instagram, I was like, oh, I should just read it too. I have an Agatha Christie Halloween book that I was reading last fall that I never got through, but I did very much enjoy it. So this is the Agatha Christie book and then there were none and 10 strangers are lured to an isolated island mansion and at dinner a recorded message accuses each of them in turn of having a guilty secret and by the end of the night one guest is dead and then other people start dying off and it's a murder mystery as most or if not all of Agatha Christie's books are so I think I'm going to try to read this too just because because I don't think that I could just avoid the challenge that is going on so I'm gonna have to try to read this one as well. The Rose Cottage by Mary Stewart. I bought so many of Mary Stewart's books and I've seen so many great reviews on them so I was excited to start Start reading her books and this is one I was hoping to read this summer so I'm going to try to read this as well. Summer of 1947, Kate a war widow returns to her childhood home for a final visit before the house is sold but Rose Cottage is not the idyllic paradise she remembers from her youth and someone has been there before her. As Kate uncovers an old secret that haunts the home she thought she knew, she is forced to confront a dark truth from her own past. So that's the description on the back of the book. It sounds interesting enough to me. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. I know this is an old book. I've wanted to read it for a long time. It just sounds like such a fun read. We're going to be spending a lot of time at our lake house and I just want to have something fun and light and interesting to read. So, um, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, you must never wash the pants, you must never double cuff the pants, you must never say the word fat while wearing the, pat, the pants, P-H-A-T, you must not pick your nose while wearing the pants. Upon your reunion, you must follow the, the proper procedures for documenting your time in the pants. Um, you must write your sisters throughout the summer. You must pass the pants along to your sisters and you must not wear the pants with a tucked in shirt and belt. And remember, pants equal love. Love your pals, love yourself. It's just like briefly what it says on the back. I think it's really fun, but um, the whole gist of it is the girls are trading the pants back and forth throughout the summer and they have to share the stories of what happened to them in the pants. I think it sounds hysterical. I'm excited to read this. And finally, this is the book I'm reading now and I started reading it in Puerto Rico. It's Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. It's a classic. It's a book I've always wanted to read. I thought it would be a perfect book to read in the Caribbean um, and then I got this really cool bookmark this was from El Moro the big forts in old San Juan and I was just like I don't know I thought it was really cool and that's what I was reading in Puerto Rico although I had very little time for reading on our trip because we spent 90% of our time in the ocean so I did not have a lot of time sitting around the beach I mostly read at night before I went to bed but I still have a ways to go with this book hopefully I'll finish it by the end of the week so I can dive into all of the others that I plan on reading in the month of August okay thank you for making it this long if you did please subscribe if you haven't done so already 
Please give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying my tea talk and book banter and hit the bell notification so that I can update you every time I have a new and fun video. I am sharing a lot of vacation vlogs, which has really been great fun to go through. If you wanna try Sips By and try various different teas, I'll leave my um, referral link in the description below. I am sure you will love it if you are a tea drinker because it's not like one specific tea company. They send you all different um, brands and types and loose teas and tea bags and all kinds of fun stuff. So I think it's great. It's relatively inexpensive. It's a fun box to get monthly. And like I said, in my tea talk and book banter, I'll briefly just tell you what I'm drinking at the beginning of the video because it might help you to discover some new teas as well. I hope you're all enjoying the rest of your summer. I'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.